things that you want to know. But after a period of time, you sort of ask yourself, hmm, is this it? I already know those cutters. Is this all there is? That's why some people go off and they do judo or they do another type of martial arts. They get to a certain point in their karate career and they, they deviate, they go somewhere else. You've most probably done it yourselves, which is great. You must probably go to other clubs. Brilliant. I always say to my students, if you can go off and train somewhere else and get their experiences, why not? And the same should thing with, uh, happen with uh, any martial artist. But at some point, you have to reflect. And the only way to go forward is to go back. And I genuinely believe that you see some, uh, especially six stands and above, you know, they wear a white and a red belt. I've never really been into that. Yeah, and then you have people, uh, senses like Sensi Schmidt. He wears a white belt. And I think it's that acknowledgement that you, you ask yourself and you think, I'm not really, that's what Schmidt says. He says, I'm not good enough to wear a black belt. <laughs> well, why, why are we wearing black belts then? If you're not good enough. So you have to go back and you have to reflect on what you're doing. So it's almost this going back and relearning again. Uh, and, and viewing things from a different perspective. You've all got lots of experience. But what you should do is you should take that experience and go back to the beginning and start again. That, that's what this wearing a white belt or a red and white belt is. Yeah? Um, so, I hope you don't mind, but that's what we're going to do today. And with our wealth of experience, we're going to use that wealth of experience and realize what we're doing or what we're lacking. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll crack on. All right, so please bear with me today. You'll feel like, oh, I'm in a beginner's class again. <laughs> There's a, there's, karate is so good because it tells you the answers. Whenever you learn, somebody's always telling you the answers. That's why people, some people struggle when they get to a certain grade. Because they've always had somebody telling them. Yeah? Uh, Sensi and Graham. You know, we've been very lucky. Uh, we had uh, Takamizo Sensei and we've had Schmidt Sensei. We've had some really good instructors. We've all, always had a Sensei. Always had somebody there to go and ask or somebody teach you. So you need to go back. When you haven't got those instructors around you anymore, you need to go back and realise. And instead of people telling you the answers, you have to realise those things yourself. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take one aspect. So this is one of my favourite subjects. Uki. The problem with any Japanese language, it loses its meaning. As soon as you take the kanji or whatever it is away and try and translate it, you, you, you lose about 90% of it. You lose a lot of that meaning. So, these are my, my English translations. If you can find another uh, explanation for it, which means a lot more to you, then that's brilliant. Yeah? Uki. So again, you know, Graham, Sensei, uh, to come as though Sensei didn't like use the, use the word block. He used the word, not getting hit. Right, block, he tended to think it was, you know, a hard clash or, it's all about not getting hit. Right, so that's a favorite subject for me because if I don't get hit, that's brilliant. Yeah, but this is just one aspect of going back and rediscovering. Or realizing that you're doing certain things, but you didn't realize you was doing those things. Or maybe you're doing something and you think, well, why am I struggling to do that? It's because you haven't broke it down. You haven't broke it down and you don't really understand the building blocks. If you understand the building blocks, then you can take those. It's like, um, it's like Mozart. He had all these 
and he could just put, all right, Rich? Uh, so it's, it's like having all these notes and then just putting them together to make some diff, diff, lots and lots of different music. Yeah? So you'll have to forgive me today. We're going to go back and we're going to rediscover. Yeah? I'm not going to teach you how to do kata. You can most probably do katas and better than me. All right, so, so they're going to be quick exercises and they'll get more and more involved as the, as the, the time goes on today. Yep. They're very simple, basic techniques. Junzik uh, Doesn't matter which one. Okay, so we're going to look at Joe Danuki and we're going to look at Gidambarai. They're just two that are picked out of the air. Okay? So when you're a beginner, you're taught to. So when you step forward, the easiest thing to do is just step back. So step forward and punch your other. Okay? So Sensi Graham is punching down the center line, down the center line. Okay? But if I move into a Junzuki stance, I've moved my center line. So when you're teaching a beginner or realizing this yourself, instead of just going straight back and trying to keep your your body on the center line, you need to go off, off the center line. I know it's very trivial, but can you just get a partner and just do that? We don't need to do many. It's that realization of what we're doing today. Yeah, nothing complex. Might get a bit complex later on. But just build up your, go back, relearn, have your knowledge. Yeah? So go off the centre into Junzuki Sands. Yeah? Wish. Thank you, Graham. That was easy enough, wasn't it? I haven't taxed anybody or stressed anybody out. No. So, Graham, can I? So Junzuki Sands. Very wish. If you go straight back and you do Joe Danuki, If I go off center, then it, all I have to do is lift my arm up. I don't, I don't have to do any fancy head block. I don't really have to rely on a collision. It's about moving off center line and just lifting your arm. So really there should be no contact, apart from maybe a little bit of brushing. Because your hand's coming from the centre and it comes naturally. So there shouldn't be any collision, it's just lifting your arm up. Do, do, you, do you understand that? Don't want to see any just lifting and lift your arm straight up. Can you, thank you, Graham, can you try that? Just literally lift your arm up. So because you have not used your weapons up, all you've done is raised your hand. You can then attack with it. So I'm going off centre, lifting, and it can come straight back in. There's no stop, start. It is just one move. Your Joe Danuki, thank you, Graham. Your, your Joe Danuki was a passing place. It, it was an intermediate. It is a, I'm just covering. It's not a stop and then start again. It is off center and forward. Can you quickly try that? We're not going to send it spending long on him. All of a sudden, you're reverting back. Your muscle memory, your years of training, all of a sudden, some people have gone back to what they were doing before. This is not about doing what we did before. This is about trying something new. So make sure, if you've got a line here, okay, make sure that you, oh, don't step straight back. You move off center, just enough and lift. 
two, come down. Make sure you go off centre. I cannot stress it enough. You need to go off the centre. If you go, keep on going on the centre, they're just going to keep on coming forward, forward, forward. You're playing into their hands. You need to go off. Okay, last couple of goes and then we'll crack on. So, we've gone back. We've had a look at Joel Danuki. So, what you should have learned from that, this is a very, very basic version, right, of Taisabaki. Body movement, a very, very basic. Yeah, even from, you know, teaching beginners. This is about moving your body out of the way. Moving your body out of the way. Not having to rely on collision, but just lift. Yeah, uh, Sensi Schmidt, uh, we had a lesson with him many, many times. But remember the once, and I'm sure Graham and yeah, Sensi here will uh, remember it. He says, you don't, need, you don't need to know many blocks. You don't need to learn karate. So all you've got to do is be a bell ringer. If you're a good bell ringer, That's all you need. Don't need Joe Danuki, don't need Sotoruki. You just need to be a bell ringer. So you always try and, I think, how, what does he mean by that? But when he, when he moved, when he did the Ukis, he, it's beautiful moves, absolutely gorgeous moves. No stress, no, just the, his body weight. Dropping or lifting. Yeah, so doing this exercise, it's Taisabaki. Doesn't have to be a complicated Taisabaki, it is just a very rudimentary Taisabaki, a body movement. And if you use a body movement, you don't then have to, Graham, thank you. Osh. Osh, Junzuki. You don't have to, you don't have to rely on strength. You don't have to rely on damaging each other. So, No collision, no bruises, especially at our age. We don't need bruises, do we, Graham? No. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this time we're going to do a Chudan attack, and we're going to look at Gidan Barai. Yeah, not so I'll punch Chudan. Not a collision. Not a collision. It doesn't need to be a collision because I'm not there. Most of you are just standing there nice and relaxed, which is brilliant. So if you're not, put your hands down. Colin. This is Gidan Barai position. If it's relaxed, this is Gidan Barai position. How many times have you heard your instructor, your Gidan Barai is too high? It's too high. This is this is too much, this is tension. This is Gidambara. This is where it should be. Because it's relaxed. It's just above your knee. How many times have you heard that of your instructor? Your Gidambara is too high. So if you just relax. That's Gidambara. I haven't even had to move it to the side. Do you remember on the last course we were talking about Frankenstein and just moving the hip over? Yeah? So the same with this. I've moved my hip over. It's there. I haven't changed the position of it. All I've done is changed my body position. So can you go back with your... If you want to, try and get, train with the, maybe somebody else. Yeah, don't train with the same person all the time. <clears throat> it's a bit like being married for 50 years. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, 
Make sure you're going off centre. See where your arm position is. Yeah, lift it. Just drop it down. Stand back up. Shouldn't it change position? Yeah? Look at your look at your basics in a different way. Use your experience that you've had over the years. Realize what you're doing. Try and work with your body, not against it. Yeah? Okay, carry on. Get on, Barry. Yeah? So what you should have realized is um, some of you are not doing enough, some of you are doing too much. Uh, going to the side too much. Blocking too much. Yeah, what I, and I'm sorry for those who don't do, I think the majority of people here do what It's about doing the minimum amount. Anything more than that, there's a Japanese word for it, and Sensei Shimichi used to use it quite a lot, and uh, it's mentioned quite a lot in the Wado Academy. Mudana. It's a wasted move. It, you, everything should be for a purpose. But if you do too much, it's a complete not a waste. You've gone away from doing Wado. You should keep it to the simplest, minimal part. Yeah? So, that was a basic uki using the Taisobaki, the very, very rudimentary Taisobaki. Yeah, there's more advanced ones, especially when you come to do Nagasu. Nagasu. Nagasu is about letting, sorry, Graham, can I? Again, this is realizing each individual part of an uki. So, fighting stance, I should. Yeah, so, uh, lunge jaw done. Good. Okay. Nagasu is about allowing the technique to flow through. So, I don't want you to use your hands. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Roger. You go forward and turn. Not this. How many people have you seen doing the Gashizuki? Uh, can't do it now. Um, that's really bad. But you, you get the gist, don't you? You must be going forward and relax. Okay? Um, so sometimes these get in the way. I'd like, I, I want to keep them. I don't, <laughs> yeah? But what I want you to do is, uh, sorry, Graham, I'm messing you about. <laughs> Fighting stance. Oish. Is to. Oish. Okay? Is to. Do Nagashizuki. And, and be close. Because that's not. It, you're trying to get rid of Mudana. You don't want to be doing this. That's stepping to the side. You go forward and move your. Move your body. Yeah? Can you try that exercise with your partner, please? Oish, thank you, Graham. Oish. Come in. I'm noticing a lot of people are, are you using yoi. Use keisoku or heisoku. If you're in yoi, she's then uh, all of a sudden you've introduced this width. You've introduced this half a gap that's not necessary. So make it a little bit more difficult for yourself, but that's what it's about, realizing what, you, what you're doing, is try and make sure you go straight forward and turn. Then you've, you've eliminated all that width. Yeah, you've, you've not introduced stepping to the side. Stepping to the side is not nagasu. Nagasu, straight forward. Straight in. You're letting the technique flow past you. Yeah? Carry on. Because you're starting to progress and you start to realize things. Uh, 
there's a small number of us who get together on a Saturday morning. And I always tell them, this is my lesson, it's not yours. They're just there to annoy me sometimes. <laughs> so, I always say, it's my lesson. And then we religiously go to the pub afterwards where we can talk and relax. Yeah, and most of the times they say, you really did our head in this morning, Roger. It's about doing their heads in, yeah? Trying to make them think in a different way. But it's me, it's my lesson, it's things that I am realizing. And once you start going through things, you, you, you ah, that's similar to this, that's similar to that, that we, I can use that here. Graham? Fighting stance. So there's a couple of extra pieces that we can, if you want to come around so you can see a little bit better, that's fine. There's something else that we can, because we're going forward, uh, you can do nagash, nagash, uh, Nagasu going step forward and punch. You can do it going backwards. Uh, Senzi Schmitz does not like people to go back. <laughs> you go forward. <laughs> Yeah, you attack. But there's some things that else that you should realize. Uh, my, the distance that you should be away from him. Some of you were a little bit too close. Yeah. The other thing is, a lot of you were leading slowly. I know you wanted to do this for years, Graham, but, <laughs> <laughs> but slowly again. Right? You don't lead with your head. Back again. So you do not, stop there, you do not, can you see I was leading with my head? You should be leading from your tongue. That gives you a little bit more room. So it's your my, your distance when you're starting, and your my eye when you're actually doing the technique. I is to be with them, like uh, Sensei Kerry said a few weeks ago. Uh, Aikido, I, to, to be with them, to, to gel with them. Yeah? And the next thing you should be thinking about is your... Uh, sorry, let's just relax a bit. Is... Um, go no sen, sen no sen, sen sen no sen. Has, have most of you heard of that before? Yeah? So the main thing is, sorry. Yeah, fighting stance, rush. Whenever you want to. Oh, and again. Nope. Again. Nope. I'm seeing his body move. So the earlier you can detect that, the more it's going to help your inasu. Again. So, it's not that I'm quick, it's the fact that I'm reading his body, sense his body. Yes, yeah, so I want you to do Nagasu again, but I want you to lead from the stomach, from your tandem. Yeah, and I want you to be reading their body. We know they're going to be punching, we know they're going to be punching Jordan. So that, that's a bit of a help but you've just got to detect that, uh, that moment that they move. So if you, you know if you've, got, if you've got Nagasu, if you're happy with that Nagasu, then start looking at your distance, your Mai, your Mai, your uh, uh, Sen no Sen. Yeah, start introducing those little bits and pieces to a very basic move. So instead of it being a basic move, it becomes a lot more intricate. Can you see how you're going back and you're relearning and you're trying to introduce your experience to it and to refine it? Yeah, some of you, it's a little bit new. But you need to start developing it. And the only way to do that is to go back and relearn it again and add those bits in. Because that's what makes it go from being a, an average technique to a good technique to an exceptionally good technique.
Yeah? Okay, try that. Yeah, yummy. Uh, I'm noticing that um, people are not moving their back leg. This leg, because it's, it's, if this is a center line here, send you send, this is on this side of the line, this leg's on this side of the line. Some of you are doing this part with the body, but you're not moving this leg. It's still the other side of the center line. So you need to make sure that you bring the back leg over. You do sword, don't you, as well? Yeah, so just think of this sword coming down, or a knife defense coming down. If you leave your leg on this side, you've not cleared the send your send. You need to make sure your back leg is moving as well. Okay, so last few with your partner, but make sure you lead in, you center line, not going to the side, and moving this back foot. And try and be as close as possible. Hush, carry on. Use your back leg. So we add in a little bit more in each time we do Nagasu, but then basic Nagasu is there. You should be using your Tatai Seishan stance. Tatai Seishan. Because you can move any direction you want. So, just to make sure that we are using our Tatai Seishan. Graham, can I? Uh, that leg forward. And that's it. So, when you push in, push in Tomakomizu. Oh, that's great. So, Try and think about your knees now. If you're in this stance, it's a little bit difficult to do because you're not central, you're committed to go forward. If I, just by turning the foot, I'm not using my hands, I'm using the gas suit, but I'm taking the attack to the knee. Kazushi Waza. Sorry? Kazushi Waza. Kazushi. Kazushi. Yeah, you have it. Thank you, Graham. Watch what you're doing with people's knees. It's, you know, taking it sideways. So be very careful what you're doing. I don't want anybody going away today with an injury. So Sensei Graham says, Kazushi, uh, when you're doing uh, Gumitagata, uh, you learn Irimi, moving in. And Kazushi, which is breaking, breaking their balance, taking their, taking their space in this world. Yeah? So... Starting from here, Nagasu, try and use Tatai Seishan, lead with my stomach. Watch for Gono Sen Sen Sen. Look for that technique. Then take the attack to them, not with your hands, with your feet. It's very easy to do things with your hands. It's difficult to do things with your legs. But these are also a weapon that you should be using. Watch what you're doing, but try and take their knee. And that'll help you with your distance as well. If you've, if you've got a, if you've got a, um, like a sprinter, a racer, they want to get to the, they want to get to the line and go through the line. Yeah? So this, you're thinking past the line. You're not just thinking about your nagasu, you're thinking about attacking as well. And without using hands, this is a pretty good one because you can take their balance straight away. Yeah, can you try that? But watch what you're doing with other people's knees. Thank you. Can you see how you've gone back? You've tidied up your Nagasu. Yeah? You're adding the timing elements into it, seeing the technique from it. You're leading. You're now thinking about using your knees to attack with. I haven't even started to punch yet. But if you can get the detail in on, 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 this, on your stances and your body movement. That's when people, when they're taking their dangroid, some people, are, they're good, they're naturally good. But there's other people like me, I struggled. I really did struggle. So you, you, you have to sort of take it back and you have to learn again. Take it back and learn again. 
In us, in us to redirect. So then the points you can do it to any 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 uh, target, but we just go with the Jordan. I don't want you to do any Nagasu yet. Nothing else, but you need to realise that you are redirecting. So when the punch comes, just lift your hand. You don't have to do anything else. Can you say it's redirected? Just lift your hand if you're taking on the inside of the outside. You're going back and relearning. I don't want to see any Nagasu yet. No, nothing else apart from understanding your centre line. When, when you... Uh, no, just carry on with that. We'll come back and I'll, I'll talk some more. This is fine. When you're working on the outside, when you're working on the inside, you have to move your head. We're saying just lifting your hand up. You need to move your you need to move your body. Yeah, just the top half. You don't have to move the bottom half. By turning the bottom the bottom half, you've got the screen made to impact you. Okay, so just a couple more. Just wait. Only a few more, then I'll be bringing you back. Okay? Yeah, man. Can you come around? Please. So, you've got to keep reminding yourself we're doing a very, very bare to the bone technique. You have to go right the way back. So now we want to understand Noru to Roy. So it's basically we're going to use Tudor and we're going to use part of the technique that we use. He's basically dropping. And we're doing this right. And the only reason why it's going forward is because my body's going forward. I'm not going. So I'm literally dropping and going forward. Noru to right. We'll be doing some other types of Noru a little bit later on. But first of all, get back to your basics. Yeah? You would be doing this with Nagasu as well. But for now, just drop and get this rubbing, this writhing. Don't hit them, because we hit them, it's usually the biggest one wins. Yeah? So, try and understand your, your technique by dropping and writhing the arm and into the body. Can you, can you, Discover that. Don't do any extra. We'll do those after. We've got to go back to the beginning. Just as a visual. If you were pilots of an aeroplane, I would not want to be in your I would not be in your plane. Especially on landing. Yeah? You need to 
land smoothly, you need to engage with them early. Yeah, that's when your your realization of distances and reaction time. Go on, send and send and send. I keep on, but you need to watch. You need to engage them early. So you need to focus on your timing. It's not just about the arm dropping and the and the, and the noru. You need to get your timing right. Can you see how you're looking at the basic and you're trying to put a little bit more? The, not extra parts, but you need these other little bits and pieces to actually make the technique work. The basic fundamentals. And by doing it in the basic fundamentals, it makes you search for those other little bits and pieces. Not dramatic ones, but timing, distance. Okay, just think about that when you do. We'll do a few more. Thank you. Right. Seeing quite a few of you that are not using your your wrist. You see, I'm using my arm. That's why, that's, why, that's why it's difficult. Use your wrist. Engage this. Because that's it. No, no, that's fine, fine. Can you see that's, it's almost like a hook. I've hooked his arm. If it's up, hooked. And I'm taking the punch directly into him. Yeah? Thank you. Uh, if you take your fighting stance. Yeah, you should, it's not, you don't have to have your hands like so. Your wrists can vent. You need to be pointing. Because your katana, your sword. So bend your wrists as well. You're all high enough grades now not to have to keep your wrists straight. You want to use your wrists. So if I'm holding a katana, if I open, this should be in the center. This is your fighting stance. Not, not here. Tataisation. Use your wrists, especially on this. Can you try that? Try and use your wrists. Carry on. Yeah. So, we've got one more to do. No, we've gone all the way through the basics now. For that, we'll start trying to put them together or break things down. Uh, can, you, can you understand how you've took your uki, you're not getting hit, you've broke it into different stages, you've tried to keep to the very basic minimum amount and if you understand that, then you can start mixing and matching and realizing what you're doing. Not just trying to mimic somebody doing a, a gummy tagata or a kion. Oh, I think I've talked about it before. But when you're attacking or defending, uh, it's, just, it's, it's not acceptable just to try and hit them. <laughs> you have to choose your target. And it's important to understand what happens to their body. Well, let me try and explain it. This is your center sen, your center line. Okay? You've got two others through the eyes. So it's, you've, moved the, you've, moved, you've sectioned the head, one, two, three, into quarters. 
and through the nipples, basically. So you've got one, two, three, four sections on the body. So when you actually strike a person, you obviously want to damage them, but you don't want to lower their force to come back. So if Sensi here takes a stance, fighting stance, no, face the audience. <laughs> face the team, not the audience. So, what Sensi has done here by moving his body is actually closed those quarters up to reduce the area that people can attack him. If he's square, can you say they've opened up, they're, they're bigger quarters. But as soon as he does this, he's actually narrowed them. If he went a lot further, he'd actually just have one centre line. But you don't, you don't fight like that. Well done. I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're actually doing your partner work, you need to understand what's happening with their body, where you hit them. And I try and, I love it when somebody's got a badge on. Because that gives me a target to hit sometimes. But I know that sense is going to be, if I hit him here, on, this, on, the, on the centre line or here, it's going to be a lot more difficult to, to, to actually uh, uh, eliminate him. If I do it, say, from the centre line backwards, trying to do this, if I hit him here, his body will rotate. If I hit him here, I'm taking his full force. I don't want to do that, I want to damage him, but I don't want any of his body weight coming back to me. So I try and hit him either in the centre or slightly off the centre to sort of rotate him. Do you, do you understand that? So when you're doing your keyons, <clears throat> when you're doing your basic partner work, you need to understand uh, where to hit them. Also, it gives you an idea of where you've got to rotate your body and your head. What do I mean by that? Thank you, Sensei. I will ask you back in a sec. So this is what we're going to do. They're punching to your head. You don't do it this slow, but you're realizing the move that you need to do and encompass all of those small attributes. You turn your head from the center to here, through your eye. That will still hit you, so then you encompass turning your shoulder and your body, and that will move your body even a little bit further over this way until you're in a position that you can do your kyun. See if I can sense it again. So what we're going to use is... Uh, so we're going to go here, here, here. Not enough, because he's still going to eat my ear. Here, here. Right? Shoulders, I've moved it a little bit more. Now, because I've wound this up, this is going to lend myself to... Then I can punch. So if we're doing the key on number one, if we're just doing this technique for the jaw done, yeah, I need to turn my head, turn my shoulders, turn my hip, Then you can punch. Not just, not just. Can you see you turning each certain part? Then you can release it and punch. So I want you to get with your partner and nose, eye, ear, shoulders, hip until you can't move anymore. Then you can punch. You must feel every little bit and piece of it. If you don't, you're missing something out of, on your kion. Yeah? Out of your uki. 
One, two, three, four, five. Punch. Okay. Take your time. Break it down. Thank you, Sensei. Move, 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 move. Then let it go. Yeah? A lot of you are doing this, but you're leaving your head and your body. You're turning the head and turning the shoulders and turning the hip, but you've not moved off the center line. Center line, the attack. You move. You move. Can you see I've gone off the center line? Some of you are doing. <laughs> trying to step, stop in the, in the, in the camera. <laughs> yeah? Uh, photo bombing, is it? When the, somebody dives in your photo. Yeah? Go off, off, turn, turn, turn. Can you see I've gone off the center line? Then you can punch. So make sure as you're turning, you are going off the center line, not try and stick on it. Yeah, carry on. So when, you, when you're starting to use Paisobaki, uh, that leg forward. You need to have all these separate elements in there. But it's not just for the gakas, for the punch, for the attack. It's also using, remember me talking about your wrists and your body movement? Really, when, I do, when you do your kions or the attack jaw down, it's... Okay, again. It's not right, is it? You want to bring this hand up. Remember when you did the jaw danukis and you felt absolutely nothing? So... This is what it should be. But I can't, I can't do this because I'm going to punch myself in my own nose. So I need to move my head and my shoulders to put my fist where my head was. Because that's where they're punching to, my head. So I need to move my head out the way to be able to do my uki. So move my head out the way. Not this. Turn. So can you try that? But you, you don't feel anything. You have to use your body by turning it. Turning your head, turning your body. Moving out. Yep. Okay, Rush, thank you. Carry on. Uh, do you remember when we went right the way back at the beginning and we was using the uh, Junzuki stance to, yeah, come off the center? And on Nagasu, uh, we went straight forward and we moved the back, back foot to come off the center. So when you're doing your kion or this kion, yeah, I use my hip. It's my back foot that goes, but I bring my front foot across. If I leave my foot, uh, if I leave my foot where it is, uh, Graham Sensi would have pleasure in kicking me in the groin. Yeah? So I turn. It wants to move. It's a natural position, natural movement. Just, it's almost like a controlled fall. Yeah? Now I want you to think about where you're putting your feet, doing Nagasu. But I also want you to uh, feel this uh, noru riding. Sensei. So when it punches, can you see how I'm engaging it early? And turning my head. So it's not just a hit. But it's like, a, it's like a goal. I know nothing about football. I'm from West Brom. Um, <laughs> but a goalie, once, he has to there for a penalty. I'm, I know nothing about football. But if the goal posts, he's got all this distance to try. But when somebody's coming in with the ball, they go forward, don't they? Yeah, to narrow, to narrow the angle. So... When the punch comes, you need to 
sort of almost go forward with his hand to, to catch him. Not just react here, but forward. Yep. Which will lead on to the next thing we're going to do. Yeah? Oh, should carry on. We want to start using these basic elements and bring it into your, this, this move, this key on. Yeah? Uh, so what we're going to use is a lot of uh, inasu redirecting. And you can then start breaking it down into different areas. And that's what we'll do. We'll take it, take it step at a time and we'll explore that little part of it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to reach out and try and take the wrist. Yeah, that's all we're interested in about at the moment, the wrist. So I'm going to do exactly the same. And I want you to think about the wrist. And also, I want you to try and do redirect it. You won't have much of an effect, but you, 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 will, you need to follow me down this road, this avenue, yeah, of exploration. So go for the wrist and try and redirect. Try and redirect them to the side. You won't get much out of it but it, it, it is a little bit there. And then we'll go further and further and further. Yeah? So try and do your nagasu. Try and do a little bit of inasu. And then we'll come back. Yeah? Thank you. You're forgetting... Bear with me. You're forgetting these fundamentals. You're just thinking about... If you forget this, you haven't got any power. Can you see I'm winding my body up, the spring? But I'm moving my head. So you need to get that uh, potential energy. Start, the start of your potential energy. Because potential then goes to <sighs> kinetic. Yeah? So, but we didn't get much in Asa out of that, did we? Didn't get, didn't get really much out of that. So, this is how you need to break your ukis down as well. So now, I'm going to be trying to take from the elbow, not the wrist. I'm going to be reaching out. And when I said to come out to meet the fist, the goalie coming out of his area to narrow it down, I'm going to be trying to go for the elbow. And hopefully I'll get a bit more inasu, redirection out of it. We haven't rehearsed this, have we? No. Oh, it's all right then. So, only last week. Only last week. Not a problem for, last for 20 week. hours. <laughs> so, I'm going to be, instead of going for the wrist, okay, I'm going to be going for. Can you see how much more inasu I get out of it by trying to go for the elbow? Can you try that with your partners? Go for the elbow, but you have to reach. And then go for it. Oish. Thank you. Carry on. So, we tried here. We've tried here. Where else is it? Unfortunately, I've got to go for here. Oh, dear. So, it means I've got to... It's a little bit more difficult to do. Sorry. 
This we didn't really get much from. This we got a lot of bang for the money, bang for the book, book yeah. Got a lot out of going for this one. Try this one here. You won't get that much more out of it, and it's far more riskier because you've got to delay the time that you engage the person. But this is where you need to go with your exploration of, of basics. You need to find the optimum point where you either hit or you defend. So you have to go through the full rear mid to most probably come right the way back again. So try, try and get to underneath the body. Because here, if I try this, can you see the links, the, the joints? He's got his elbow and his shoulder to absorb what the anastomosis that you're trying to do. All these joints soak up some of the effect. As soon as I go here, I've got rid of the wrist and it's closer to the body. So your next bit of exploration is, well, I'll try and go for the body. I'll try and take the body then. If I got more out of this one, I need to get further into the body. But it's not really I'm going to get that much more out of it. So your conclusion is I'll go for the elbow most times. But I want you to try going for here. Because you need to do the journey that I did. Yeah? Thank you. Try there. Yeah, carry on. So you didn't really get much out of that going under, apart from maybe a smelly end now. Because you've gone underneath his armpit. Sensei, can I? So, best way is maybe dropping and coming underneath for this one. Drop and lift. So, drop and lift. So, try it with your partner, just underneath and redirect. You try that, but it, you must have your soft knees and come underneath and then roll. You try that? Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Drop. So, we need to keep going back, doing the basic stuff, start putting things in. So when you come to do your keyons or any partner work, you need to first of all if you're struggling on a part that you're doing, you need to break it down, break it down, break it down. And just remember your basic ingredients. It's like cooking. What do I know about cooking? I can make a mean chili, but that's about it. All right? But sometimes you eat things and you think, something's missing out of this. So it's, it's the ingredients that you, that you put in there. So if, it's not, if it doesn't look right, then you, you, you're not actually, you've got, not got the full recipe. That mean, does that? So the other thing we need to understand is how to use the wrists. Uh, grab this. Okay, so what I want, what I want you to do is So when you actually come to do your keyons, you'll be using your, your wrists as well. So by doing it like this, if you want to start off with a one, move off center, remember you're turning. If I just go to the side and do this now, turning, turning, dropping, turning, turning, turning. Turn, turn, drop, turn. Then you can try it with the other hand. Then try using them both. 
but discover how you need to use your wrists. With your technique as well. Okay. Just don't hold them too tight that I can. Their hands are going blue, but just give them a little bit of resistance. Yeah, carry on. Thank you. We're going to use one of the opponents that we're doing, uh, that, that we, we have in our association, but um, um, we're going to do some Noru, we're going to do some Inasu, we're going to do some Nagasu, Nagasu and uh, Toisaboki. And it'll all be in that, that one technique. Yeah, so from there, fighting stance. So if you're going to do a maigiri, you'll be doing a maigiri, okay? When you're doing a maigiri, you, for this, you have to do a kuriyashi maigiri. A push. Nice one, okay? Okay, so you, you need to understand distances. If you have a fighting distance, since he's going to push forward to get into kicking distance, I want to punch. So he's done half of my work. I then have to push forward to get into punching distance, not kicking distance. Do, do you understand that? Fighting distance, he's pushing forward to do a, ke a carry, so it's slightly longer or further away than a punch. But because he's done part of the distance, I have to go in to get into punching distance. Oish. Good one, okay. Ready? Oish. So which one of those? I'm redirecting him. Forgive me for saying this, I'm riding you. I want you to do that first. I want you to realize the distance. I want you to go straight in. I don't want you to do anything else. Just because some of you already know it, the rest of the technique. But you need to find find that technique first. Then we'll put some else in and something else. And we'll try and highlight which one it is. Yep. Carry on. Don't go to the side. Go forward. Do it slowly at first. So what we're going to do now is add Nagasu. I don't wait until he's dropped. I want to be hitting him before he's, he's put the foot on the floor. Can you try that? Push. So you want an Irimi moving in, you want a Noru ride, you want a Nasu, and you want a Nagasu. I, I don't want to put any effort. Or, or mental, um, artificial movement to do the nagasu. I don't want to have to think about this with me doing the work. I want to engage the, the maigiri and use his force to move my body to do the nagasu, nagasu to do the flowing around. Difficult to get your mind right, especially when you, you know, you just want to fight the, yeah? So, I'm not going to be trying to do Nagas. I want to be, I want to engage and I want that leg, the Maigeri, to actually, if I'm relaxed, I can flow around it. But I'm using I'm using his Maigeri to let me flow around, but it needs me to be relaxed.
Do, do you get the idea? I'm not doing it artificially. I'm trying to relax and I'm let, letting, you know, the mind get it. Do the Nagasu for me. That, that's what I, I'm using his energy. I'm doing the least that I need. Okay, can you try that? If you want to put the punch in, fine. If not, just let, get that feeling of the Maigiri taking you around. <coughs> so if you think about it and you're using his energy to do your Nagasu, his energy will be flowing through you and you'll be punching him harder because you've engaged with his body. Yeah, you've got two lots of mass, body weight, going into your punch. So, don't go off and do another style. Don't go off and do another martial art. If you want to, great, but investigate and find your own. Find Wado, find whatever style you do, whether it's Shotokan or whatever. Find your own style, find, not your own style, find the depths of, of the style that you're doing. Not go chasing other things, yeah? I'll own up. You know why my belt's like this? It's not through years and years of practice. It's because I made a mistake. Okay, we, uh, I'm going to take that off a bit. Okay. We've got a dance bar that we use for stretching at the, and we put that through, we hold on to each hand. Come here, Kay. You're going to be the bar. Okay. Can we see that? So he was doing this. To try and get the hikite. So if I did this, this wasn't going. It was try and coordinate and pull back the hikite. I was so engrossed with the hikite, I didn't realize what was happening to my belt. <laughs> and I've had this belt for years and years. I should go out and buy another one. I look at it and I'm embarrassed every time I wear it. Right, because I did something wrong. Yeah, I did something wrong wearing this. And I shouldn't do that. Yeah? So I wear it. Every time I put it on, I regret doing what I did. So if you can reflect that into your, into your kratti as well, and, 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 and don't do that mistake again. Yeah, this is a bit of a penance every time. Yeah? It was only worn around the edges, not all this. So that's why I keep on wearing it. Right, to embarrass myself. Yeah. So, when you're doing your wado, when you're doing your shotokan, whatever style you're doing, try not to make the same mistake again and again and again. Yeah, always look for something else. And if you're of a certain grade, a certain age, you should be doing this anyway. You need to, you know, when I was at work, we used to use something called the five whys if you was problem solving. Anybody heard of that? You have, haven't you? Because you was in the mouth. Yeah. There's a problem. Why? Then you answer it and you, why? Then you answer it and you go, why? And it, it filters it down until you sometimes find the root cause. So what you do with your, your partner work or your kata why do I always make that mistake? Why am I quite hesitant there? Why isn't it coming together? So you need to hone it down to that little issue that you've got. And then you need to break it down and whether it's a new key or whether it's to do with your kicks or your kata, maybe you don't understand the move. Yep. You need to start engaging this, but you have to go back. You have to go back to basics. What's the first thing that most of you do in your dojos? 
You do your exercises. Then what do you do? You usually do your basics. Oh, Junzuki again. Oh. <laughs> but that, that teaches you something. You need to go back to go forward. Go back to go forward. And when you go back, you need to do things slowly. To, to think about it. Then throw some more bits and pieces into it. Yeah, that's, that's the way to progress. I think. Okay. Any questions? I don't mind you taking a photograph of that after because I'm just going to wipe it off later on. Okay. Uh, make a big circle. Feet together. Sit up. What's it going to be? Chris? QK. Hey. Hey. Please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for um, switching on the channel and uh, spending a couple of hours with us here in uh, rainy West Bromwich in the Midlands in England. So, uh, yeah, it's been interesting, hasn't it? Thank you.